Hey, Ozzy here again at the Photometer, and in this video, we're going to be taking a, a look at the basic workings of a camera. Now, for the purpose of this explanation, we'll use a single lens reflex or SLR. We may look at a twin lens reflex or TLR and a rangefinder in later videos, but as the SLR is pretty much the workhorse of everyday photography, that's where we'll start. Like all cameras, the SLR is essentially a light type box that allows us to admit light in a controlled and focused fashion in order to expose some light sensitive material, the film, in order to create a certain image. Now, there were certain key words in what I just said. Did, did you spot them? Light tight were the first. This is vital if we don't want to ruin our film. The only light we want entering our camera is the light we focus and control. And focus and control with the other two key words. So let's take a look at how all that comes together. Here we have a camera that may well be familiar to many around my age, the Pentax K1000. Now, I was fortunate enough to be given this by an elderly lady who had taught photography, but who was sadly losing her sight and wanted her camera still to be used. Now, I'm using this one rather than any of my others, as it is the simplest and most basic in terms of add-on features. While it's not the most feature-packed camera ever made, because it's manual everything, it's a great camera to learn your craft on. And on top of that, there are plenty available on eBay. OK, so let's take a look. The main body here is, well, that's the light type box. Light is focused by way of the lens here at the front and is allowed into the box when I depress this button here. That opens the shutter for a predetermined length of time and then closes it again. We'll look in a, a little more detail at all of that shortly. In a single lens reflex camera, we focus by looking through the eyepiece here. And we actually get to see the image that enters the lens through here. So how does that work? If I take off the lens, I hope you'll be able to see just here a mirror that's set at a 45 degree angle. Light enters through the lens and is bounced straight up into this bulge at the top of the camera. Inside here, is a five-sided prism. Well, <laughs> seven or occasionally eight-sided if you're counting the ends and uh, a couple of twiddly bits as well. And you'll often hear it called a pentaprism. Now, this clever gizmo bounces the light around inside it until it exits through the eyepiece here. Okay, so if the light comes in here but it's immediately bounced up to the top of the camera by this mirror, how does it get to expose the film which is at, here at the back of the camera? Well, just watch what happens when I depress the shutter release. Did you see that? The mirror flips up out of the way and the shutter, which sits directly behind the mirror, opens to let the light hit the film. It all happens pretty quickly, so I don't know if the video camera actually caught, uh, caught that. So let's just do it one more time. Now, let's take a look inside the back of the camera and see what happens in here. This is the light tight darkened chamber or camera obscura that gives the camera its name and which houses the film. If we look on the back panel here, you should see a smooth, flat surface. When it's closed, this presses lightly against the film and holds it flat for, uh, uh, in position for, for the exposure. Just here is where the film canister sits when we load the film and we pull the leader across and engage the sprocket holes on the teeth here. As I use the advanced lever, you should see the spool at this end turn and the teeth here too. This action pulls the film out of the canister so that we can expose another frame. That winding action also primes the shutter, which is the cloth curtain here. Now, if you've opened up your own camera, 
to take a look. Be careful not to touch this shutter curtain as it's easily damaged. So let's take a look from this, this side what happens when we release the shutter. We've seen the mirror flips up at the front but here we see the shutter curtain opens and then closes. Let's just see that again. In fact, in most cameras of this type, there are actually two shutter curtains, each with a hole the size of uh, the picture area. They pass in front of the film at slightly different times, allowing light to pass through. Now, the narrower the gap between them, the faster the shutter speed. This particular camera has several shutter speeds, ranging from B, which means that the shutter will stay open for as long as the button is depressed, then one second, half, quarter, one eighth, one fifteenth, a thirtieth, a sixtieth, a hundred and twenty-fifth, a two hundred and fiftieth, a five hundredth, and a thousandth of a second. Now, you've perhaps noticed that those timings were each roughly half as long as the previous one, meaning that the shutter speed increases by a factor of roughly two. We'll see in later videos how this doubling and halving theme runs right through photography. So, to wrap this video up, at its core, a camera is just a light tight box with a means of focusing and controlling the light that is let into it to expose the film held within. In the case of an SLR such as this one, it also allows us to see through the viewfinder the exact image that will be captured by the film. In the next video, we'll take a quick look at the role the lens plays in our photography.